Hi, thanks for checking out this tech tip from Imagine It Technologies. Today we're going to cover drawing title block forms using iLogic. My name is Mark Flayler. I'm a senior application engineer here with Imagine It Technologies, and I'm going to walk you through a few things involving using iLogic to help us build a form for quick automation of our drawings. In this video, we're going to talk about the differences between iProperties and prompted entries inside of our drawings. We're also going to talk a little bit about iLogic manipulation and how we can use some little tricks and code snippets to, to help us better automate the way we want to do our drawings. We'll talk about iLogic form building inside of the drawing environment and we'll also talk about triggering our form correctly so it shows up when we want to inside the drawing environment. So without further ado, let's jump over to the software and we'll talk about how we can go through this automation process and some of the techniques in play in order to make this work correctly. So over here in Inventor, I have a finished title block that I want to work with. Now to kind of set up the intent for what I want to do here, I have a set of customers that I want to have in a form as a drop-down list. And normally in the past, I might have done this with a prompted entry where I just typed it in for every sheet that I went to. So let's kind of take a look first at the prompted entry method of doing this. If I go to my sheet one here and I edit my title block definition, down here I have a what is the customer name piece of text. Now, this isn't just a normal piece of text. This is a prompted entry. When I double click on it, I can see that this is a prompted entry type and this is my prompt that I'll get. Now this is very similar to an attribute inside of AutoCAD. So if you were to double click on a title block in AutoCAD, you get presented with these values, you can fill them out, you can have that data mapped into your title block. But just like AutoCAD, it's per sheet basis. So you'd have to go through and do it for every sheet you'd have in AutoCAD, much like here in Inventor, you do it for every title block you place. So that's really not as user friendly as I want it to be. I want to have a pull down list where I can fill out a customer name and it's the same across all the sheets. Now, the other downside to having this prompt and entry is it's not searchable in my document management software vault. So essentially I'd have to do this on the sheet and then I don't really have any data to track it or I might have to create a additional piece of data to be trackable inside of vault instead. So the prompted entry just doesn't work for me all that well. It's something that I feel is archaic. Much like attributes in AutoCAD are pretty archaic for title blocks, you know, the best way to do it in AutoCAD now is with fields. Um, I've really gotten away from attributes for title blocks in AutoCAD in general. And the same thing here in Inventor. I kind of get away from prompted entries to do it a little bit more in an intelligent way. So I'm going to say OK to this. And I'm going to save my title block definition. And what you'll see is the prompted entry I was talking about where it says, hey, what is the customer name? Go ahead and fill that out. Again, I don't want to have to do this every time. So let me cancel this and go back into my title block definition. And I'm just going to delete this. Now, I have another one up here called customer name. Let me double click on this one. This is my smarter one. Here, this is a custom property of the drawing. It's using the customer name property, which is a a custom field I have in the Inventor I properties. So when that gets filled out, this will automatically update. So if I close out of here again, say yes. If I go to my I properties for this drawing and look at custom, here I have customer name with a value to it. And I could change it here and that would update my title block as well as all the title blocks in my entire multi-sheet package. Now, I also said before, I want this in a drop-down list. And any of you Power Inventor users out there already know that you can't have a custom iProperty drop-down list inside of your uh, iLogic forms. So the only way you can do that is with a parameter. And there really isn't a great way to take a text parameter and export that over to the custom iProperties. So in order to do that, I have a piece of iLogic code that aids me in that process. So I'll go ahead and close this dialog here. And I'm going to look at this customer name rule in my iLogic panel. 
So when I edit this rule, what I can see here is I have a customer name parameter. It's actually a multi-value parameter, and I'll show you that next. And then what it does is it writes it to my custom inventor I properties. And if it doesn't exist, it basically creates it. So it's going to write it to the customer name I property, mapped to the customer parameter. Now, if you don't remember this code set, you don't have to pause this video. If you want, you can actually just jump over to my blog, and I put this snippet out there. So just do a search on multi-value text parameter to custom I property. So this will explain the process that I went through, as well as the ability to download the snippet that I used as well. So I'm going to say OK to this to close that out. And I'm going to look at my parameters now to show you how that was set up. So here I have a customer parameter. And this was turned into a multi-value parameter. And you can see a list of pre-filled out clients. So I might fill this out for the 80% of the clients I use. But I also have a custom value interaction as well. So I can type something in for a new client. As you can see here, I also have a drawing type where I can change between customer and manufacturing, as well as a sheet size selection so that in my form I can choose what size of sheet that I want to use for my drawing as I get to it. And the last one here, the eye trigger, is something I have just for triggering in my software. It's really just a placeholder parameter. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of here with done. And I'll just point out here as well that I had to create another rule for the drawing type between customer and manufacturing because that uh, bit of snippet that I have is on a one per basis. So you have to create an additional I property for each one as you go through there. I also have the sheet size rule. If I edit that rule to take a look at it, you can see it does a sheet size equal to A for my parameter. Then it's going to change my active sheet size to whatever I want. And I just basically did A through D. Now, in order to create a form, you have to go over to one of your two form tabs. A local form that's stored inside the file is on the forms tab. A global form, which will get stored in your design data directory instead, is also available. Here I just did a local form. I already have one created, so I'm just going to right click and choose edit to show you what I have in there already. So as you can see, I've created a little bit of a nice form here already. I have a picture in there, a couple of rows, a couple of groupings for my ECNs, but I would also like to add some of those other properties that I had. Now if I look up here, I have parameters and I have I properties. Now I need the parameter for the customer. I'm going to add this here to my row 2. You can see I get a drop down for that. Now if I look at I properties and try to add the customer name I property instead, what's going to happen is I see a very static value. So you can't get that drop down list to appear. My piece of iLogic code will take my parameter that I have and force it into an I property, which is not a direct export with text based parameters. So it kind of takes care of that for me. Uh, so I'm going to delete this customer name I property. I'm actually utilizing the parameters here to do my dirty work. And I also want to add my gamma radiation, of course. And I also like to add another row for engineering approvals. So I'm going to go to my toolbox here in the lower left and add another row. Make sure this goes above that. So this row 5. I'd like to have my, let's see, status, here we go. I want my engineering approved by and my engineering approved date in that row. So that looks pretty good. And there's a lot of things you can do with this form. You can have different groups like I do here for my ECNs. This is really the way I love to do it now. I don't like putting revision tables on anything. I like to have ECN documentation instead of having a very uh, clunky revision table. And you can also change how your buttons appear at the bottom. There's a lot to this form. And I'm just going to kind of resize it here quick. There. That's how I like it. Go ahead and close the dialog with the OK down here to approve my changes. Now, if I launch the Imagine It title block form by clicking on it, you can see I get the ability to add the information here. Let's say I change to a B size and I'll choose Apply. See, it changes to a B size for me. And this is a 
a form that I can use with uh, without having to exit out of to zoom or anything. So there's another setting in there that adjusts if you can do modal or non-modal uh, forms. For the customer type, here I can choose from a list of customers or I can type in my own. You go back to my parameters. I might just have to come here to do it. Choose custom value. I want to add Acme to the list. Now, as I gain more customers, I would probably come back here and add more to this list as I go. So let me grab that form again. There's my pull down list. Choose my gamma radiation and engineering approved by. I approve my own stuff. For these dates, I actually have a nice date picker, so I'll choose today, as well as my ECNs, numbers, and dates. So this is Rev A, ECN number 1234, and this was done actually on the 7th. The previous ECN was release 0. This was a bunch of dashes because we don't assign those to our 0 revision, and the original starting point was on the 1st. I'll say OK, and it automatically fills out my form down below. I have Acme, I have my approval, my approval dates, as well as my ECNs filled out. Now the other stuff like my title descriptions and part numbers, those are waiting for my files that I place in here to automatically fill them out. So I'm not too worried about them, but it did update my gamma radiation, and I didn't have customer here, I wanted manufacturing, so I need to change that somehow. In order to get back into my form, I could go back up here and choose this, or I actually have a rule called form launch, that is using my trigger icon to actually fire the form for me. So I don't actually have to utilize that. Uh, you just have to make sure the name is exactly the same. So here I have Imagine it Title Block as my trigger. Okay, so this form wasn't launching because I had a different rule in here. I don't want to show global. Instead, I'd like to have a form for a local one. So let me clear this off and do a standard show form and I want this to be non-modal. I'll just take this and copy it in. There we go. And it launches my form when I need it. So I'll go back and hit my eye trigger that's up here on my eye logic panel. You can also add that to your custom right click menu if you needed to, but I'll go ahead and trigger that. Brings it up again. Now the last triggering I want to take care of is an event trigger. If I go to my event triggers, I can tell it to fire certain rules. Now I would like it to fire the form launch rule for my triggering as soon as I do a new document. That way when I save this as a template, immediately when I come in here it will give me a form launch and it'll give me my dialog to fill out my data. If I like to do this any other time, now I can just use my eye trigger or my iLogic form button in my iLogic palette on that left hand side. So once again, I'll go ahead and just launch my form and I'm gonna change my drawing type to manufacturing. Now I'll update my drawing type for me. So this has been a look and how to use some iLogic coding as well as the form builder to create some automation in your drawing title blocks and also have your data indexable inside of the vault system rather than using a prompted entry which you'd have to go through each sheet and fill out and then the data is really kind of cut off from any other kind of tracking you might want to do. So I hope you enjoyed this tech tip and we'll catch you next time.